Summary of Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. Jeanette says that like most people, she lived with her parents when she was a little girl. Her mother had an aggressive personality, was quite religious, and had a very black and white view of the world. The decision was made to bring Jeanette, who was adopted, into her mother's house so that she might participate with her in a tag match against the rest of the world. During her childhood, Jeanette prayed hard every day, and she now spends most of her time helping her mother with their evangelist church. When Jeanette is very young, she meets a gypsy woman who tells her she will never get married and will always be moving. Jeanette is more interested than scared by the woman's statement, and she starts to wonder what her future holds at a young age. Along with telling the story of her childhood, Jeanette adds made-up stories that reflect what she is going through at that particular time in her life. It's said that a pretty woman meets a horseback rider in the woods. The hunchback wants to die but has too much to do. The woman offers to take over the hunchback's duties, and the hunchback dies right away. You can see how Jeanette was devoted to her mother from a very young age in this story. All of her mother's problems became Jeanette's own. Jeanette is not allowed to go to school. Instead, her mother takes her to church every day for talks, some of which are scary. On the road, Pastor Finch tells Jeanette's group about the bad things that can happen when someone is possessed by a demon and how anyone, even the good young Jeanette, could become the devil's tool. Jeanette learns to read from the book of Deuteronomy. She really wants to go to school, but her mother says it's just a breeding ground. One day, though, a letter from the government comes and says that if Jeanette doesn't start going to school, her mother will be sent to prison. Jeanette finds it hard to fit in at school. She knows that the way things are done in her church isn't always right, when she was a little girl, she went deaf because of a problem with her adenoids, but no one noticed because they thought Jeanette was having a divine experience, but at school, she can't help but spread the gospel of evangelism and make disturbing art projects that scare her classmates. Jeanette's mother tells her that she has been called to be apart from her classmates and that she will find peace in her real calling as a missionary one day. Because Jeanette's mother is so devoted to the church, she has tense and even angry relationships with the heathens next door and is completely behind all of the church's outreach efforts. Jeanette's mother makes her stand on an orange box in the rain for hours on end while handing out church flyers. When Jeanette's preacher talks about perfection, she thinks of another story that shows how things work. She imagines a story about a prince who wants to find the perfect wife so badly that he kills anyone who stands in the way of his idea of what perfection is. In the end, he kills a kind, beautiful woman who he thinks lied to him into thinking she was perfect. Jeanette starts to worry about men and women and their relationships when she is 14 years old. Jeanette is afraid that all men are really beasts and that she will have to marry a beast one day. Jeanette meets Melanie, a pretty young girl, one day while she is running chores downtown with her mother. Over the next few weeks, Jeanette visits her new friend Melanie many times in downtown, and the two become close. Eventually, Jeanette asks Melanie to church. They let Melanie join, and they start to spend more and more time with each other. Jeanette's mother seems to be feeling unwell and tells her daughter not to let anyone touch her down there. That night, Jeanette and Melanie sleep together for the first time. For the next few weeks, they can't be separated at all. Jeanette is afraid that they are experiencing unnatural passion, but Melanie reassures her that their love is real. Jeanette tells yet another story. This time, it's about angry rebels breaking into a castle with high walls and destroying a peaceful and happy holiday dinner. During a short poetry break, Jeanette thinks about how time, history, fiction, and facts all relate to each other. In her writing, she says that people are more likely to accept history than stories, fiction, or memories. This is true even though history is often changed to hide mistakes, pain, and guilt from the past. When Jeanette goes down to the room one morning, she finds Mrs. White, a church member, cleaning it. Her mom isn't there. Jeanette walks her dog through town and thinks about how she tried to explain her relationship with Melanie to her mother after she found them sleeping in the same bed. She also thinks about an awful occasion from her past in which her birth mother came to their house and tried to take her back. 
When Melanie gets home that night, Jeanette tells her she loves her, but Melanie doesn't say anything back. The next morning at church, there is a surprise attack. The minister and Jeanette's mother tell the whole church about the girl's relationship and ask them to come up to the pulpit and say sorry. Melanie changes her mind and is taken away to be prayed over, but Jeanette doesn't. Miss Jewsbury, a member of the congregation, invites the shocked and upset Jeanette over for tea and tells her that Miss Jewsbury found out about the girl's relationship from Jeanette's close friend, the elderly Elsie Norris, who often let Jeanette and Melanie stay at her house together. Miss Jewsbury tries to make Jeanette feel better by slowly rubbing her. Soon, the two are making love, even though Jeanette hates herself and is disgusted. When Jeanette sneaks home the next morning, she finds the parlor full of church leaders and the preacher. Even though they pray over her for more than 12 hours, Jeanette still won't change her mind. The preacher tells her mother to keep Jeanette in the room for three days without food, and the mother does what the pastor says. During her time alone, Jeanette sees an orange demon who tells her that she will die of sadness if she leaves him, but her life will be harder in a different way if she takes him and keeps him around. Jeanette, who is tired and hungry, decides to change her ways, but she keeps her monster as a sign that she will stay true to herself and not deny her wants. Miss Jewsbury drives Jeanette to Melanie's family's house nearby so they can say goodbye. Jeanette and Melanie spend one last, sad night together. When Jeanette gets home, she has a fever, which her mother thinks is the evil spirit leaving her body. While Jeanette is recovering, Melanie and Jeanette's mother burns all the letters they wrote to each other. Jeanette feels cheated and knows that her relationship with her mother can't be fixed. By the summer, Jeanette feels like the person she used to be. She goes to a beach town with her church on a revival trip and makes friends with Katie, a pretty girl from church. After some time, Melanie walks back into church in the middle of the nativity play that Jeanette and Katie are helping Jeanette's mother with. That night, Melanie calls Jeanette and tries to get back to being friends with her, but Jeanette, who has been through a lot, pushes Melanie away. Melanie follows Jeanette around town, and Jeanette can't get away from how ashamed and wanting she feels. Katie thinks something is wrong and asks Jeanette to camp in her garden with her parents' caravan over the weekend. Jeanette says yes, and on their first night together, they make love. As their sweet, two-way relationship grows, the girls spend time together at church and Bible study, and they find comfort in the spiritual side of their relationship. After a year, Melanie comes back to town to tell everyone that she is getting married to an army man. He leans into Jeanette and whispers that he forgives both Melanie and Jeanette for their mistake when Melanie introduces her fiancé to the crowd. Jeanette spits in his face. Jeanette is angry, so her mother kicks her out of the house. Katie and Jeanette were finally caught when they tried to spend a week together at the guest house at their church in Morecambe. Jeanette took the blame because she didn't want Katie to have to go through an exorcism like she did. The events of the past few weeks have made Jeanette decide to leave the church and her dream of becoming a missionary. Sir Perceval was the youngest knight of the round table and King Arthur's favorite. Jeanette then tells a story about him. Perceval leaves Camelot to find something, leaving Arthur alone and in a state of grief. One day at church, Jeanette's mother and the pastor say that women will no longer be able to preach or teach Bible study at their church. They think that Jeanette's homosexuality is because she tried to play a man's role as a preacher and religious teacher, and they hope that if women aren't allowed to preach and teach, no one else will become homosexual. While this is going on, Sir Perceval is lost in the woods and keeps having dreams of his king. But every time he tries to reach out and touch him, he wakes up with poison ivy on his face or thorns in his hands. On the next morning, the minister calls Jeanette and says he wants to do another exorcism on her. Jeanette refuses to go through it and says she is leaving the church. Her angry mother kicks her out of the house. On her last morning at home, Jeanette is shocked to find that it is just another normal morning, not the crazy judgment day she had thought it would be. Then Jeanette talks about a little girl named Winnet who gets lost while walking through a big forest. A magician offers to feed and house her, but Winnet is wary of him. 
She makes him a bet, if he can guess her name, she is his, if he can't, he has to help her get out of the woods. Winternet's name is guessed by the magician, who then takes her back to his castle. There, she quickly forgets about her old life and starts to think that she has always lived in his castle and is his daughter. Winnet makes friends with the people who live in the town around the castle. She also meets a strange boy and becomes friends with him. She brings her new friend to meet her father at the yearly harvest gathering, but the sorcerer kicks the boy out because he has come to love someone else. Winnet asks her father to let her stay, but he will not let her live in the castle if she stays in the town. Instead, she will have to work as a goat herd. One of the witch's magic birds tells Winnet that she needs to leave right away or her life will be destroyed by grief and her heart will turn to stone. The sorcerer sneaks into Winnet's room as a mouse and ties an unseen thread around her coat button as she gets ready to leave the castle. Jeanette is doing odd jobs around town, like driving an ice cream van and helping out at a funeral home. Jeanette is driving around in her ice cream van one day and sees Elsie's house. She decides to stop by and see her old friend. She learns that Elsie has died and finds that the room is full of churchgoers. They beg Jeanette to go to the funeral, but she can't because she is an outsider. But Jeanette's boss tells her at the funeral home that Elsie's funeral will be held there and that she needs to help him serve food for the wake. Jeanette doesn't want to agree because she knows that things will go badly if anyone from her church sees her. In the beginning, Jeanette is able to set out food without anyone noticing. But when her boss calls her out to serve ice cream to the mourners at the end, chaos breaks out and Jeanette's mother publicly disowns her. Winnet gets lost in the woods again. A woman from a nearby village takes her in and brings her back to the new town. The people there keep telling her stories about a magical town far away where houses reach the sky, but she finds it hard to learn the language. Winnet wants to leave the town, so she starts making a boat that will take her far away. Windet is scared on the day she leaves, but she knows she has to go on her own. Jeanette moved to a big city from her small town, but she feels like her past has caught up with her. Jeanette's friends often ask her when she saw her mother last and if she ever dreams of going back home. She says she does, all the time. She can't hide where she comes from, so she chooses to spend the Christmas break at home. Small things have changed when she gets home, her mother now has an electric organ and a radio, and Jeanette learns that the church's Morecambe guesthouse has become dirty and run down. Not so with her mother. She talks to her like nothing happened between them. Jeanette wonders if her mother has forgotten why she left or if she ever really left. Sir Perceval, who has been traveling all day, spends the night in the house of a friendly host who asks him about his trip. Perceval feels bad about saying that he left Camelot to find something holy and perfect that he could keep to himself. He hasn't found it yet, and he misses his home and king very much. Perceval goes to bed because he feels selfish and bad about himself. In his dream, he is a spider hanging from a web. A crow flies by and cuts the thread with its mouth. Perceval the spider falls to the ground in the forest and runs off. Jeanette spends Christmas with her parents. There's more bad news about the Morecambe guesthouse, and Jeanette learns that her mother is working hard every day to keep her religious group together even though it's falling apart. Jeanette sees her mother, who had just gotten home from church, quickly turn on her public radio and try to get in touch with other Christians in England. About the author. Jeanette Winterson was born in Manchester. She was adopted by the Winterson family six months after she was born and grew up in Accrington, an industrial city in northern England, with Pentecostal evangelical Christian parents. In order to pay for college at Oxford University, Winterson had to leave home, live in her car, and do strange jobs after coming out as a woman when she was 16. She had been raised to be a missionary. In 1985, when she was only 25 years old, Winterson released her first book, an autobiographical story called Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. The book was a huge hit and won the prestigious Whitbread Award for a first novel. It was later turned into a series TV show for the BBC, with Winterson writing the script. The show's premiere in 1990 got even more praise and attention. 
Winterson has written over 25 fiction, nonfiction, and children's books. In 2006, she was made an officer of the Order of the British Empire. She works as a teacher at the University of Manchester and lives in the Cotswolds. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.